I don't know what is up with my hair, so we're just gonna pretend that it's slightly normal. Hi! So today is the day after my birthday. I know, exciting, right? No, not really. I'm just kind of old and kind of frightened by the future. But I have a specific reason for why I'm making a video today, because last year, the day before my birthday, which I know I'm kind of off, but I accidentally wiped my SD card, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Last year, on the day before my birthday, I made a video that I uploaded, and it was like an introduction to my channel type thing, but it was really horrible and I hated it, and so I took it down. Insert clip of me being really awkward here. This is my very first video, the day before my birthday. Thought it was kind of a good day to start. Yeah, that haircut though, and that lighting. Pretty cringy, right? I wanted to talk about that video a little bit because a lot has happened to me since that poor version of myself has made that video, and I wanted to kind of do like a 2015 in review. And I found that footage a couple weeks ago, and I just thought, you know what? I am so much different from the person I was when I made that video, and so much has happened to me, so I'm gonna do my year in review. And so, in the most cliche way ever, I decided to write a letter to myself. Your past self, you know, everything that all the YouTubers do, but mine is specifically reviewing 2015 only, and it's not talking about who I am really more as what happened to me. So it's kind of like me just telling my past self, look out, this is what's gonna happen. So here it goes. Dear me from 2015. First things first, happy birthday! You're still awkward, you're still kind of weird and you still only have two friends. But hey, at least now you have a boyfriend, right? I decided to write this letter to you to kind of warn you about everything that's gonna happen in the coming year, and I'm gonna do it month by month. So we just basically covered January, let's move on to February. In February, it's the first time that you've ever actually had a boyfriend on Valentine's Day, but you're not gonna be here, oh no, you're going to be in England. So maybe you don't get to spend Valentine's Day with your boyfriend, but I mean, who cares, because you're in London. So much happens to you in London. And I mean, if being in London isn't awesome enough, or England in general, you get to go to Bath and to Salisbury and see St. Paul's Cathedral and go to Buckingham Palace and Windsor and so many places. And you think, how can my life be better than this? Then comes March. In March, you get to meet Shane Dawson. And then you're thinking, oh my gosh, my life can't get any better than this. Shane Dawson is a wonderful person. And he's honestly like, the sweetest guy I have ever come across. He's so nice. You were really nervous and kind of screwed up, but that's okay because, I mean, it was your first time ever doing anything like that. You have to give yourself a break. In April, you reconnect with one of your friends who you haven't talked to in years, and by years, I mean at least three or four years. But you reconnect with her and you rekindle your friendship. She probably becomes one of your best friends. That relationship is gonna be important. So try not to screw it up past me. <laughs> in May, you have your first big convention that you've ever been to. And I mean, you've gone to a couple of smaller ones before, but this is a big deal. This is Momocon. It's huge. And Momocon is amazing. You get to make so many new friends, and these friends will help you through so much. And at this point, it seems like your life couldn't get that much better, right? I mean, you still have anxiety, and you're still kind of worried about your best friend who you've been fighting with since September of the previous year, but so far things are going okay. Then June comes. June is a really hard month, because everyone else is out of school, except you. You're not taking classes with your friends anymore, and so you kind of feel really sad and alone. Your best friend has not been talking to you, and she's mad at you and you can't figure out why. And so you finally decide to tell her that you've been dating her brother, and that you're in love with him. For obvious reasons, this does not go down well, because that's like the general rule that you don't do. You don't date your friend's siblings, you just don't date your friend's siblings ever. And so, obviously, your best friend gets really mad at you, but that's not the reason why. She's not mad at you because you're dating her brother, she's mad at you because you're not dating her. Which is kind of dumb. Later on in June, she tells you that she hates you to your face. It kind of breaks something in you. You get really sad and depressed and you feel like life is pointless and what is there to look forward to after everything that I've done? Why should I even keep going? But you gotta keep going because on July 1st, you go back to England again. And July is still kind of hard because you still don't have any friends, and the time difference of five hours is killing you, and you can't talk to anyone. But you gotta keep pushing through it, because everything that's about to happen is totally worth all of that. In the month of July, you find out that Summer in the City, the biggest YouTube convention in England, is going to be going on while you're in England. I mean, it's Summer in the City, and everyone you've ever watched for the past two years is gonna be there. Why wouldn't you want to go? And it's so exciting. 
and you get your dad to buy you tickets, of all the things, of all the chances, you just so happen to be in England in the exact month that Summer in the City was going on. And so, you get really excited. Finally, August rolls along and Summer in the City is here! You get to go and meet so many amazing people who inspire you to be artistic and creative and just generally be the person who you want to be. And you have never been happier. You realize that all the depression and the anxiety and the cutting is not worth letting it control you. And you realize that there are always going to be really sad things. But you gotta keep working on it. And you gotta know that there's always going to be something ahead that's happy. Life isn't completely full of sadness. Summer in the city's over, what are you gonna do now? How could anything possibly top what you just did? The next thing doesn't really top this in the list of things that have made you so happy you wanna cry, but it is one of your biggest life experiences and something that you'll probably never do again. Because in the first week of September, you get to go to Paris. And most people who live in the United States never get to go to Paris because it's very far away. You're in Paris and you go to the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame and you get to see and experience so many things that most people would never even imagine. You are loving every minute of it because why shouldn't you? You're in Paris and you're in England. Then comes October and October is probably the hardest month you've had since June because not only are you out of England and back home in the boring United States doing school and just generally living life again, but it's also Halloween and you're alone and you had a big fight with your friends in June and you haven't talked to them since and you don't have anyone to go trick-or-treating with, you don't have anyone to dress up with, you always spend this holiday with your family but now that you don't live there anymore, you can't. And it's very sad to be away from England which had become your home in a sense because you'd spent three months there doing everything and you kind of fall back into this depression cycle of hating life and never being able to understand how anything could get better. And then November comes and you're still depressed and you're still sad, but you're getting better and you're not as sad as you were before. You get Troy Sivan tickets because you find out that he's coming to where you live and it's so exciting because you're just on this roller coaster that keeps getting better and better and how can you possibly have all these good things keep happening to you? And that kind of hits a tipping point. You realize that, yeah, maybe life is kind of sad, and maybe a lot of horrible things happen, but eventually something great is going to happen and you need to be there to experience it. And so November passes along with Thanksgiving, your least favorite holiday, and then comes December and Christmas. And Christmas is always great because presents and food and family and time off from school and time off from work and life in general just seems to take a pause and let you enjoy it. And so for Christmas, you get a guitar, which is something that you've always kind of wanted to have, but never really had the motivation to ask for or to play. And it's one of the best gifts that you could ever have gotten, because now you love playing it. Play it as often as you can, and you wish you could play it every single day, but alas, you're kind of a procrastinator. And you also get Silent Hill remastered, and play that, and scare yourself to death, and decide that you want to buy more horror games. So yeah, Dear Me from 2015, that was your year. And I hope you learned something from what I've told you. Sincerely, yourself from 2016. So yeah, that was kind of an emotional roller coaster of really sad th topics and also really happy topics. I wanted to make this video just because I felt like I had probably the most amazing year ever and I don't know what year of my life could possibly top that. But I also wanted to make this video because life is still amazing even if you are sad. and that you can be sad even if your life is amazing. And that happened to me a lot. I needed someone to tell me that it was going to be okay back then. And even though people told me it was going to be okay, I didn't really register with me because I was they weren't telling me in the right way. They weren't telling me that there were things to look forward to. They were just saying, everything's going to be okay. And it's true to some extent, everything will be okay. Even if it's really hard right then, everything does get better to some extent. Maybe it won't be perfect because life is just generally not perfect, but it does get better. Telling anyone with depression that they're not going to believe you, they're going to think, oh, they're just telling me the same thing that everyone else tells me. But it's true. And I didn't really realize that until November when I had come back from England and I was really depressed because I wasn't there and I didn't have any friends and I was very alone and all my friends lived far away. Or I needed someone to tell me that there is going to be something like Summer in the City or Troy Savant to look forward to that you can be ecstatically happy and feel like sunbeams are going to shoot out of your head, you know? I really needed somebody to tell me that again. And it would have been nice to have somebody to tell me that maybe it's not going to be great, but something will happen eventually that's going to make you really happy. So you just have to 
try to think about something like that and think about something that made you really happy because something like that is gonna show up again even though it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, that's my video for this week. I was thinking about doing videos every week but I don't know if I'll have the time or patience to watch myself when I edit. But if you liked this video, you can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. And there is a link down below in the description to subscribe to my side channel where I made a vlog talking about everything that happened on my second trip to England, so July through September, if you would like to watch that. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up because I love people's thumbs, I don't know. If you'd like to leave a comment, leave a comment down below telling me something that happened to you in 2015, whether it was sad or mediocre or it was amazing and just spill it all, I want to hear everything. I have to go now, I have to catch a plane. I love you all, you are all glorious, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!